Okay, welcome everybody to a CE course. Uh, this is presented, um, it's a one hour CE course and it's going to be presented by Spence Hebden. Spence is a former employee of Stonehill and uh, I've always enjoyed Spence's uh, sense of humor. He, uh, he chooses fun videos to watch. And so we're gonna see uh, a couple videos along the way today. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to this. We have quite a bit of demand. Um, agents want to know about dental insurance plans. Um, it's getting to be more demanded. And you'll see that it's actually the number one demand uh, by consumer, uh, by beneficiaries for, for uh, it's what they're most concerned about uh, beyond the uh, beyond the, 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 the what's, what's the word I'm looking for, the, the treatments, the CPT codes that are offered under original Medicare. So um, Spence, why don't we go to the next slide here? And so Spence actually asked me to jump in and just sort of prime the pump. And so we're gonna talk just briefly about uh, dentistry in history. And uh, until Nancy got us going on this, uh, Nancy's in charge of these of these uh, things in agent development. She uh, looked up some history on dentistry, and and we found out some things that I had no idea about. One is that they uh, that the ne Neanderthals were doing dental work uh, 130,000 years ago. Uh, we don't have any of their teeth, anything that show that they worked on it. We just have simple dental tools that do that. And so people already back then, teeth were causing enough problems um, that people were already trying to come up with ways to solve, to solve the, the problems that they have with their mouths. Um, it looks like uh, tooth decay really took off once we stopped being hunter gatherers and we started uh, settling down and farming and we started having lots of grains and carbohydrates that's when tooth uh, problems took off. We're gonna look, I'm gonna look at another slide here in just a second that goes into a little more detail. Oh, thanks, Spence. But so there is, uh, they have flint tools um, that they were using on infected teeth. And we have uh, scratches on the teeth and we have copies of the flint tools, or not copies, but we have uh, the flint tools from 12,000 BCE. We have um, people who were drilling um, teeth in the Indus Valley in 7000 BE with, with bow drills. Those are those, bow drills are those things where you have a little vertical uh, drill bit and you have a piece of string tied around it and then it's tied to a bow and you move the bow back and forth and it, it makes the, the bit or whatever drill down. The earliest dental filling uh, was uh, in Slovenia, 4500 yeah, 4, BCE. They were treating uh, dislocated and fractured jaws in Egypt, 3000 BCE. And the first root canal that we have uh, evidence for was in Malta in 25 BCE. So this is how far back it goes. And these people were not professional, right? They're just people who are in enough pain that they're actually choosing to try to solve the problem themselves. Next slide, Spence. So this is, I found this interesting. This is a, a picture and hopefully you can see it quite well here. Um, so there is an archeologist, Stefano Benazzi from the University of Bologna who discovered uh, a molar and this is the molar. <clears throat> and you can see it's been drilled and it's been dated to about 14,000 years ago. It's a male who was living in, in Northern Italy. They were able to confirm that this was drilled out by using a scanning electron microscope and they can see the scratches on the enamel and everything where they were digging out the decay of. Um, the result is from what we can tell is, is apparent success because the enamel is worn away after the treatment, but before death. And they found a lot of the of, of the picks and everything that they used to do this. Most of them are bone picks. Some of them are wooden picks that they still have. Okay, Spence. So 
Um, let me just talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to be doing here. So this is for CE. That means that there have to be questions that we're going to send out to you. Um, so you'll be sent out these questions and you'll be, um, Spence is going to be going over the questions later on. Uh, it used to be that we would sort of give you what were during the during the presentation, but the state has put the kibosh on that, so we don't do that anymore. Uh, but we will be talking about it. We will be talking about what the answers are and, and everything. And but when we send you the emails, you'll have to return that to us. And we'll gonna, we're going to ask for your license number and your phone number uh, because we need those things for reporting to uh, CIRCON and therefore to the state. Um, if you're if you're joining the meeting with the phone and I didn't see anybody who who did this. Um, we do need to know the name uh, so that we can we can send you an email so that you can answer the questions and then send back your license and phone number. And uh, even though you haven't had a chance to talk too much here, I'm hoping that uh, what's going to be, what we're going to be talking about is going to be triggering questions in your mind, um, comments to make, and I hope you'll join in. I know some of you. Um, some of you cannot actually talk because uh, you don't have a mic or something like that. So write something in the chat. I'll be monitoring it. Maybe some other Stonehill people will be monitoring that and we'll be forwarding that to whoever's presenting. It'll be Spence who's doing most of the presentation. And we hope that uh, it turns out to be sort of enjoyable. It is it is something that's a little more lighthearted than a lot of the uh, uh, presentations we do about about regulations and what you can do and not do in marketing and everything. Okay, Spence. Uh, this is a this is a just to set the mood to show you how misunderstood dentistry can be, and therefore how misunderstood you may be and may feel to yourselves to be when you're talking to people about dental insurance and everything, Spence found this uh, rather revealing little video. Yeah, when I was five, I promised my mom I'd be an astronaut. Hi, I'm Ryan Bartnoff, and I'm a dentist. I don't like my dentist. I hate the dentist. I hate, capital H, going to the dentist. I hate, I hate, hate. What am I saying, I hate going to the dentist? As the owner, I've worked hard to make this office look as best as it could be. I've cleaned up the waiting room. We put in these bricks. I chopped down this tree. Look at this fake plant. We use the latest technology, like digital x-rays. We're changing things from paper to paperless. Movie glasses. You know what happened last time I went to the dentist? I had all four wisdom teeth pulled. No anesthetic, very little. It was like Civil War style with a bottle of whiskey. Whiskey? That's ridiculous. At our office, we give our patients their choice. This is a picture of me and my staff at a Christmas party. Uh, there's Melanie, Liz, Pat, Rosemary, Olga. My friends say I'm an equal opportunity employer. I don't like my dentist's office because it smells weird. I have not eaten beans in four years. They're mean to me. They probe me with tools. Small blue brush. My dentist creeps me out. It's kind of like a serial killer. Charity work? I've never worked at a homeless guy before. Does your tooth hurt? I can fix it. I drill. We have suction cups. We do fillings, crowns, root canals, dentures, cleanings, whitening, veneers. I pulled this. A lot of patients ask me how old I am. It doesn't matter. I'm a mature, professional dentist. Can you say I'll suck it? No. Um, we, uh, we do really high quality work here. Yeah, when I was five, I... Let's see if I can get this to go. Okay. So <clears throat> that history that Doug just gave us, Oh, by the way, this is Spence Hebden. Thank you for letting me be part of this. Um, it's been a while since I've been part of this group, and I'm 
excited to be here and thank you for the opportunity doug and nancy and those at stonehill saw a lot of names here come up that i recognize and quite a few i don't so um that's how things go when you get older and things move on you just things are always changing but um that history lesson and then um listening to that dentist um promote his place the procedures i kind of got the feeling the procedures really didn't change so much but they tried to make the waiting room and the experience better by letting you watch videos and nice place to sit and wait but um people still hate the dentist but when it comes down to it um people need dentals uh, work done and they need the coverage to help cover it um on this slide here it's just a you know things that you already know about you've probably had these things happen to you in your own life um but it turns out that the, the things that we put up with uh, you know tooth loss cavities crowns bridges that kind of stuff if those aren't taken care of they can contribute to other health issues that can be um life-threatening and there's a list of them here you know heart disease stroke respiratory infections the thing that caught my eye on this one is the bottom one possible link with alzheimer's um on my wife's side both of her grandmothers um at the end of their life had alzheimer's i don't know if she knows this or not but she is ocd about her teeth um she flosses and brushes all the time I don't know if that's because of that, but I'm gonna let her know that this is, you know, it's a possible link to it. Maybe she'll know why she does all that crazy stuff with her teeth all the time, because she's worried about uh, how her grandparents turned out, but it's a serious deal. And I think the, the carriers are starting to understand um, the, the importance of the care for your mouth and having diseases of the mouth and what it does to the rest of your body. Um, here's another uh, video. This one's not very funny, but it does have a lot of information. And this is from CNBC. Um, so it has a little bit of credibility to it. Um, we're just going to watch a little bit of this and then talk to you after. Going to the dentist can be, well, scary. Americans have a lot of reasons for not going to the dentist. They include fear of actually going, inconvenience, and trouble finding a dentist who's covered by insurance. But the top reason by far is cost. Nearly 60% of Americans said cost was the main reason they haven't visited a dentist within the past 12 months. That's the case regardless of their age, income level, or the type of insurance they have. That's because dental insurance is, well, wonky. It functions differently than medical insurance, and that can be confusing for patients. Dental insurance is a mixed bag. It's a misnomer to call it dental insurance because in reality, it's really not insurance, it's reimbursement. It is frustrating for a consumer when they visit several different offices and they find out that the fees are varying widely. People may question whether getting dental insurance or even going to the dentist at all is worth it. The public may look at dentistry as elective and that's where the problem therein lies. That mindset can actually drive costs up in the long run. There were roughly 2.2 million emergency room visits in 2016 for dental conditions, according to the American Dental Association. The American Dental Association estimates that diverting these emergency room visits could save $1.7 billion per year. Preventative care is the key to oral health care and also a key to systemic health care. The system isn't easy to navigate with or without insurance, but there are ways patients can save at the dentist. Access is frequently available, but people are unaware of how to access the access. Let's break down. So that last comment is, uh, I think our biggest job is a lot of people, they need, they don't know how to access the access. So it's our job as agents is to help them get uh, to where, they have access to plans and coverage where they can lower their costs, get that preventative dental that they need and help lower costs, not only just for uh, themselves, but also for the industry itself. Yes, you know, millions of dollars in, in um, emergency um, situations where a little bit of maintenance would have taken care of it. So here's the forecast for senior oral health in the, for the next uh, 40 years or so. Um, 
by 1960 there'll be 98 million 65 plus members that's almost quarter of the population of the united states and i think these are the same reasons most people don't have coverage right now is uh these same three reasons here that are showing they're they you know economically disadvantaged can't afford it um their genetics um help or are reason for some of their uh, dental issues and then uh, a lot of mobility without dental insurance so of that quarter of a population um the same reasons will exist then as they do now for not getting the help that they need now this was an interesting slide when i looked at it um reasons that medicare advantage plans are not good fits the number one um, reason for that poll was is it does not provide dental coverage that meets my needs that was the number one i want to bring your attention to the fourth one down it says does not cover all of my current prescriptions that was not the number one number two or number three reason for it um first one was dental doesn't have dental coverage and the third one was does not include my established dentist in the network so According to this poll, dental uh, concerns were a more important fit than the prescription drugs. And then if you go all the way to the bottom, the last two is does not include a new dentist I want to see and does not include my established primary doctor in the network. So when I'm out there across the table from people and I'm talking things, the first things I look at is their drugs and their primary care doctor and you know any specialists they might have i found that interesting that that those two things were it's only six and seven percent of people said that that was a concern and only 19 percent said the concern was a prescription drugs and the top three were dental concerns so um kind of changing my look at the focus i need to to make as i um present things to my clients that uh, maybe things that I've been talking about aren't the best, aren't the most important thing on their mind. Of course, the only thing you can do to, to make sure you're getting that is ask questions and make sure that you're um, providing the right benefits for what they need. But as a general population, I thought this was uh, an eye opener for me that dental concerns were the top three within the top three um, with their drugs so um, found that interesting um, okay five okay for seniors um, there's five major problems that they end up with and of course when you get older you get more uh, medications you get you know more health issues some of those medications cause dry mouth and then dry mouth as a side effect also causes other diseases in your mouth um, it uh, causes some do, um, gum diseases the, the saliva turns out is a very important part of your oral oral health and without that a lot of other things can start to happen inside your mouth you start taking those medications it dries out your mouth and then you start getting some issues with your teeth uh, tooth decay 96 um, percent of say, of seniors have a cavity um 68 percent have uh, gum disease and this one was a surprise to me they have eight or fewer teeth due to do decay or gum disease 26 percent of the population has less than eight of their teeth um doesn't go on to say if they have you know if they replace those with uh you know dentures or or appliances or stuff like that but um quarter of the people we meet out there that are in the 65 and plus don't have their own teeth that kind of scary for me i'm going to be 65 plus in a couple of years i still have most of my teeth so i'm feeling pretty good about that um and one in five have lost all of their teeth this is another thing the last one the oral cancer 62 is uh, the average age when most people are diagnosed with uh, mouth throat and tongue cancer i'm going to be 63 next month 
Um, you know, as you age and you look at these type of numbers, you kind of go, you know, look at your own mortality and go, uh, it's kind of stink. It's kind of scary. Um, any questions on anything so far? Not seeing anything in the chat, and I'm kind of rambling. So don't be afraid to just uh, interrupt and take over. Okay, so shortcomings, some of the most in, in, um, insurances and dental coverages. Um, so we're all probably aware of this. A and B, original Medicare, does not cover preventative or comprehensive dental. So you got people on a supplement plan, they have no coverage whatsoever. Um, they will cover um, um, trauma and diseases of the mouth on regular Medicare, but for just general maintenance and and crowns and those type of things, not going to be covered. Um, Medicare Advantage plans, we've all noticed the change in that in the last few years. Um, they've really stepped up the um, coverages on that a lot. Uh, I can remember when I first started, dental was just not an option for any of them unless uh, they were offering like Humana and Select Health, which I probably shouldn't name names, but they would have a add-on that you could charge them more for as an optional supplemental benefit. Um, but now they're having embedded um, benefits in almost all of the MA plans we have now. Almost all the carriers have some sort of um, coverage as part of their plan. And that's just been in the last you know few years um, where they've seen this to be a, an important part. Um, I am getting dry mouth, so I've got to stop and get a drink of water and I'm gonna let Doug talk a little bit more. So back to you, Doug. Uh, had my mic off. I'm just uh, looking at the chat box and I'm seeing that Lorraine put in, I have found most of my clients have no idea how important teeth are to health. So that's, that's one of the things that we'd like to talk to you today about is how important uh, oral health is to overall health. And I think that if you as agents um, can learn how to talk about this in a way that you feel comfortable with and that you know puts your clients or your prospects at ease, I think that they're going to be much better off. And uh, I think it may increase your business as well, just because if you can talk about something that is uncomfortable to talk about, like oral health, then you're going to be able to develop a rapport with people that will stand your business in good stead. This, uh, this next slide is trying to talk about how um, having dental insurance can actually change senior behavior or, or the behavior of just about anyone who has, uh, who has dental insurance. Going back to that article that Spence played a few minutes ago, where the reporter was talking about economics as being the number one concern that people have. And then I don't know if you noticed, but fear was the number two concern that people had. So we're trying to, uh, dental insurance can, if you position it the right way and you discuss it and you get it so that it's operating in the minds of your beneficiaries in a way, what you'll find is that having this can reduce their economic excuses. I don't know about you guys, uh, my dentist, um, my dentist is very good about sending text messages to me or email messages to me reminding me that my six month checkup is coming up. Um, and what I can do with that motivation from the dentist it's really easy for me to simply say, yeah, I'm just I'm going to go with this. I'm not going to resist it. I'm not going to blow it away because I know how important preventative dentistry is. And so I just go ahead. Um, anyway, so that that is what's going on out there. These dentists are getting better and better at communicating with uh, their patients. And I believe that what 
that it would that it would stand you in good stand to try to hook your clients into that communication channel with their dentist. Um, what happens is there's things like preventative exams and bike queens, and they have low or no cost sharing in, in many cases. And so if we can get people into the preventative aspect of the dentistry and get them hooked in with that uh, communication from their dentist, it's going to keep their oral health up, which is going to keep their general health up as well. It is good for savings. Uh, if you can find just a small cavity and uh, get that, uh, sorry about that, get that um, taken care of so that it doesn't turn into a root canal and it doesn't turn into a crown or it doesn't turn into an extraction. Um, everyone is better off with, with that. And it really is good if you can get them in there for those uh, low cost or no cost procedures, because that gives a de the dentist an opportunity to actually explain to them in the context of who they are and what their mouth is doing. So it's very individualized in particular, the consequences of not coming back, not taking care of the problem and everything. And so if we can use this as agents, if we can use this as a tool to try to get our seniors so that they are frequenting the dentist a little bit more, it will increase the longevity of their lives, but I think it will also increase the retention uh, of these guys in your book of business. Okay, Spence, next slide. Um, so one of the things that I think that uh, all of us agents have to do, and, and I'd love to hear what you're, how you do this, right? Um, one of the things um, that all of you have to do as agents is you have to look at the health player healthcare plans that are out there and sort of decide which ones you like, which ones the design is good, uh, which ones have a good network, uh, which ones have good drug coverage. And, and it's getting to be that you need to start evaluating dental because after, after the provider network and after the uh, prescription drug coverage, and I know agents who see provider network is more important than the drug coverage and I know people who think that the drug coverage is more important than the provider network. Those are the things that most people are using to determine it. It has, those things have taken a back seat because um, CMS and the carriers have done a good job of making sure that those things are taken care of. Um, and so now we see this other thing coming up, which is according to the marketing data that Spence showed you, is this dental coverage people are looking for dental coverage because mostly because of the pain involved and we'd like to get it so that they also understand the long-term effects to their health and so here's some here's some discussion points some talking points about evaluating uh dental coverage uh and and to talk about this let's let's put the let's put categories of service in our minds let's anchor those in our minds the first one is preventive treatments like exams, cleanings, and fluoride treatments, right? The things that keep your mouth healthy or that discover problems when they're in their very beginning stages. The next is uh, comprehensive treatments like fillings, periodontal treatments, crown and bridge, root canals, the things that most people are going to the dentist for. These are the things that um, often cause pain or cause anxiety. Uh, they cause you to have to take more time out of your work day to go to the dentist. Um, and then the last one are in what I'm calling enhanced treatments. That's not a technical term, but I, I can just remember how many times in the past, whenever a carrier has come out with their new plan benefits and say August or something, and they talk about the, the dental benefits, I don't even think I can keep track of how many times an agent will interrupt the uh, carrier rep and say, so does this cover implants? Uh, does this cover posts? Um, so there are these enhanced treatments and some of these enhanced treatments are getting to be covered more and more. I think it's uh, it probably comes as no surprise to most of you that most of the uh, embedded dental benefits uh, 
now do cover posts. And I, I'm not exactly, maybe it's 50. I'm not really sure how many, but I can just feel that the number of carriers who cover posts, it's going up. Um, I can feel that uh, as they say that every year. Uh, a lot of dental coverage actually accompanies vision coverage and hearing coverage. Uh, the carriers are getting better at that in the Medicare Advantage plans. And most of you know that in the standalone dental plans, um, lots of times they are bundled together with uh, vision coverage, which usually uh, refers to, you know, to, to frames and, and things like that. And then hearing coverage, which lots of times is trying to encourage people to get hearing aids. And these things are all tied together. They were all excluded by original Medicare. And they were consequently excluded by the Medicare supplements. But I keep hearing that Medicare supplements are trying to do, uh, are trying to come to agreement between all the commissioners and everything about how they can start offering these things and become competitive with the Medicare Advantage plants, which are uh, rather, rather um, in a sustained way taking, taking the market share from the Medicare supplements. So some of the criteria, um, and I'd be really interested if we've missed stuff here, you're telling us, I've got a little notepad here um, so that we can write stuff down if you have different criteria. One of the um, ways that agents evaluate dental health care, I mean, dental coverage for their clients is what percentage of the cost of each service is paid for by coverage, right? Is it 50%, is it 30%, is it 60%? What, what is it? You can compare those things uh, plan to plan. They also look at the dollar limits on coverage. Is it 1,500, is it 2,000, is it 3,000, is it 4,000? They look at the provider networks. They look at the procedural limitations. So some, it used to be that hardly any insurance, uh, especially the standalone, would cover implants. Uh, and most of the time, if you do get an implant, it just blows right through those coverage, those dollar uh, coverage limits on it. Uh, sometimes they have waiting periods. Uh, these are things mostly with the standalone. I imagine uh, we're going to see that going away as the standalones try to compete with the embedded MA plans, uh, though I I'm not sure how long they're going to last with those embedded uh, dental plans. And then there is also cost sharing versus reimbursement. In other words, cost sharing is you go to the dentist, you give him your dental insurance card, and he then bills the insurance company, accepts payment from them, and you pay the outstanding balance versus reimbursement uh, several years ago or a couple of years ago, and I, I can't remember. Those of you who know Aetna will be able to tell me if it's still in effect. I think it's not. But it used to be that if you went to the dentist, they would cover you up to a particular limit. You would pay the dentist, and then you would get your receipt, and you would submit it to Aetna, and then they would reimburse you the amount. So these are things that uh, agents look at because lots of beneficiaries find reimbursement uh, cumbersome um, process and I know the carriers lots of times they start this and then they don't actually have the processes in place to make it happen quickly and so reimbursement can take uh, quite a long time um, just looking at what uh, Dave says here it's a... yes Dave it's important to know which procedures are in which categories are they preventative is it the preventive category is it the comprehensive category is at the enhanced category okay spence next next slide um by the way did did anybody uh, just looking here colette says some group employer plans do the reimbursement still yes um so and i if if we missed any of the criteria that you guys use um, I'd love you to put it in the chat, or I'd love you just to, to mention other criteria that you use to determine which uh, dental benefits you want to offer to your to your to prospects and, and your 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 beneficiaries, your your clients. Um, <clears throat> so here's this is a go ahead. 
well, one thing that I I do on the standalones, if they are, if they do have a waiting period, but if they do need some more extensive dental work done, um, there's the dental policies out there that every year you have it, your your percentage gets lower and lower, your cost sharing versus the insurance. So I'll look at those if they do need some extensive work done. Because those yes. can be out like at 3,000 I've seen. So they may start only preventative for the first year, but the second year they get 1,000. You know, the, the second year is 2,000 and the year three is tapped out at 3,000, which is quite a bit of coverage. It, it, it is. And what you're describing is the way that the, the standalone dental insurance works. Um, but yes, you're, you're absolutely right. So that's, that's good to know that. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, to talk about um, the different categories of, of dental coverage here. And when I was uh, thinking about this, I, I came up with three, the first three on here, and um, Spence came up with the, with the other two, and I'm glad he did, uh, especially that fifth one. It's going to be, you'll see this at the end. Um, you'll see you'll see his uh, his video about people who do their own self treatment. Um, Medicare Advantage plans, right? This is the biggest change uh, that's occurred to uh, Medicare Advantage plans for quite a while. And Medicare Advantage plans, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, they can either embed the dental benefits, so it's just like a standard benefit, like going to a specialist or something. You have co-payments, sometimes zero co-payments. Um, there is usually a, a limit. Some of them now are putting it on those cards uh, that you can, you know, that you can use for the, the various benefits. And then some of them are doing it as optional, up, optional supplemental benefits. Uh, so this involves a separate premium. Um, I think that Humana still has one of these. I believe that Regent still has one of these where your coverage is not embedded. It's optional. And so you have to choose whether or not you want a premium for that. So Medicare Advantage plans do it in a couple of ways. There's standalone dental insurance here. It's in the category of ancillary along with, say, things like hospital indemnity, where you would talk to your client you know, after you've talked to them about the core health care plan as sort of an add-on. And then there are dental discount plans. And we're going to look at these, uh, the, the various pros and cons of these things. Friends and family, let me just sort of mention this. Uh, this is if you, you're a senior and your son-in-law is a dentist or your daughter's a dentist or your brother's a dentist or you know the the backdoor neighbor is is someone and you're going to them and they're giving you a a, a good deal uh, it turns out most of the carriers don't like to honor these types of of, of arrangements and then i'll let self i'll let uh, spence do self-treatment uh here at the end um spence next next slide um and this is again this is spence uh, and he's just making sure, and I, I just kind of uh, said this on the prior slide, but insurance plans don't pay for the work if it's performed by a family member, like a brother, an uncle, um, something like that. And the uh, interesting thing is, uh, go, go ahead, Chuck. Actually, it's in the code that they're not, and in all the contracts, they're not required to pay for something that you're not obligated to pay for. But if if your brother or brother-in-law is a dentist and he charges you and you have to pay him, they'll cover it. Oh, good clarification. Good clarification. It's just it, they just don't cover things you're not required to pay for. Okay. Okay. So uh, we might next time we do this, we may want to clarify that. It's always good to have uh, Chuck come on with his legal background and talk to us about these things. Um. And discount plans, they don't care, right? It's, they just, they don't care about any of this stuff at all. Okay, that's next slide. So just wanted to mention, this is not a promotion of any of these, but some of the Medicare Advantage carriers offering dental coverage in, in Utah, because this is a Utah CE 
Aetna, Cigna, Humana, Molina, Regent, Select Health, United Healthcare, University of Utah. It's getting very difficult to compete uh, without having dental coverage into it. Cigna was the one that really sort of brought it into the Utah market. They came in, they took a lot of market share the first uh, two years that they did this. And all of the other carriers looked at that. They had to respond. And now it's uh, it's pretty well a level playing field in many ways. Okay, Spence, next slide. Um, this is an interesting slide. And I'm going to leave it up for just a few minutes. Um, it's interesting because uh, my my background is I'm, uh, I'm just looking at something here that Colette's writing just a sec you know i don't know about the the dental schools in colette i know that when most of the most of the people i know from from my past who have gone to dental schools they go to dental schools and they don't have to pay because it is practicum for the uh, dental students to be able to work on people so people go there the treatment is free and everything but they have to you know, sign waivers because they know that these people who were working on them are students. Um, and I'm not sure, will they work side by side with those? I'm not sure what that question means. Hopefully you've been able to look at the screen that's up on, on here. It is marketing research. And the column with the blue bars on the left are the types of information that insurance companies provide to their beneficiaries. And the um, column on the right, the green, is what the beneficiaries wish that they could, uh, is, is the information that they wish that the insurance companies would provide. And there's sort of a, there, there's sort of a correlation here, um, but not a whole, a whole lot. And you can also discern the, customer or consumer preferences in here. For example, uh, the third from the bottom is a Part B give back. Um, I think this is talking about information that's given, but I think that uh, the beneficiaries, they uh, are actually trying to say with asking for more information on this, that they wish that the carriers would actually do this, right? So there's a, a little bit of overlap between asking for information and asking for services or benefits here Doug. yeah go ahead pardon me for interrupting but i that part we give back uh is with respect to particular plans that have been getting advertised on television they do exist but therefore uh special situations primarily with dual uh, eligibles etc where where they actually credit you with part of your Part D premium that the government is paying them, and I think where it says thirty-seven percent wish they had that, I I don't think they understand what what it is. It, it, they're just even the play even the plans that provide that are very limited in who can qualify. Um, yes, uh, so even when they give the Part B buyback they still have to meet the criteria that CMS establishes about the amount of value that's supposed to flow. So if those, if the Part B give back is occurring, that means that the value of other features has had to necessarily degrade and they try to get it so that uh, it's not terribly obvious how those uh, degradations occur. I did find this interesting. If you are trying to um, figure out what things uh, you want to talk about in your marketing or in your conversations, these types of um, these types of slides, this type of research, I find to be very, very useful. Uh, another comment here. Let me just look at it. Uh, I think, Lorraine, what you're asking is who the, who this is from. And Nancy, I believe you dug this up, and I believe this is from Deft Research, which is the research arm of Integrity Marketing. Um, 
anyway, I, I think that's what your question was asking, right, Lorraine? Yes, Doug, that's deft research, their most recent research from the past year. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, um, next slide, Spence. Now we get to start with the, the questions that we sent to you um, in order to get the CE credit. And as Doug mentioned earlier, um, we used to give you the question and then answer it for you, but that's um, <clears throat> got our hand slapped for that. So we're not going to do that right now. But among the Medicare Advantage plans, which benefit has experienced the biggest change over the past few years? I'm not going to answer that, but look at the name of this CE course, and you'll probably figure that out. Um, now we'll go on this one. Features of types of MA dental plans. So we've kind of talked about some of this, but so you've got the embedded type that are in most of the MA uh, plans now. Um, coverages vary from the plans. Um, you can go anywhere from 1,000 all the way up to 5,000. Um, again, depending if they're in a dual eligible plan or not, um, but almost all of the plans right now have a thousand or more um, embedded in the in their plans. And there's some of them, there's no network. Some of them, you've got to stay inside their network, but there's no waiting periods. There's no um, co-pays or um, deductibles, that type of stuff. They get that thousand dollars. They can spend all of it. Um, there are lists of covered procedures that they'll need to be aware of and some plans. Um, Doug also mentioned the, the flex cards that are becoming very, very popular with a lot of these different carriers. If they're on those, they use them just like a credit card. So I think the carriers are trying as hard as they can to make it as easy as they can for uh, beneficiaries to use their dental um, benefits. Um, and eliminating that problem of, you know, filing claims and and being in network and that type of thing. And that my personal feeling is, is, is the uh, plans continue to evolve over the next few years that we'll see uh, that dental just get stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, um, carrier payments, um, like I said, they've, they're kind of... Just doing direct payment to the dentist and most of the carriers. They've got the card. Um, as we talked earlier, the reimbursement type of things are kind of going away. That that when Aetna did that, it was kind of cumbersome. A lot of people had problems with it. I don't think the carriers um, like the service that they had to to put into that to make it happen. So my again, my personal feeling on that is that the reimbursement type of idea is going to uh, diminish more and more as the years go by. <clears throat> that first uh, video we showed, the guy, <laughs> the lady called dental coverage wonky, and then the other one, it's, it's not real dental insurance, it's dental reimbursement. <clears throat> so that's basically what it is anyway, but uh, I think they're making it easier so you don't have to send the receipts in and wait for it to come back and six or eight weeks later you've got to fund that until you get your money i don't think that was a good idea with the optional su supplement benefits um, for those clients that are on the supplement plans um, they're still not going to have any dental coverage with parts a and b um, so standalone plans are the optional supplementals are have to be in there with a separate premium um, we've talked about how the standalone plans tend to you know every year you get a little more coverage pays a higher percentage um their waiting periods all that kind of stuff you have to kind of weigh those and decide what's going to work best for your client um usually on carrier payment like say with the ma's they're starting to get to where they just pay it like they do every other claim the provider sends it in and the uh, carrier pays it uh, on this up to the plan limits with the cards you use your card till it's gone and then uh, your coverage is done for the year um, 
here again, standalone dental, um, some of the features. Um, I think you're pretty aware of that, so I'm not going to go through this real much, real closely. But the thing that most people don't like about this, and again, this is my personal experience and my personal opinion. When one of your clients come to you and ask you for dental, it's usually because now they're having a problem and they're realizing they need a crown and it's going to cost them 1500 bucks, and they don't want to pay 1500 bucks. And so when you look at a standalone plan, they're going to have to live with that for perhaps as much as a year before it's even going to be covered. And then the max that it will cover on some plans is $1,500. And on some of those plans, the first year doesn't even cover 100%. It might cover 60 or 70%. So um, you've got to look at all that kind of stuff with the standalone dentals um, to help people understand that the procedure that they need is not going to be immediate. And if they're willing to wait till that kicks in, then they can. Um, most of them, you know, are enough pain that they don't want to. So you need to come up with a different uh, different option for them. And uh, that brings up the discount plan. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with these as well. Um, basically what they are is the company's gone out signed contracts with all the different dentists they've agreed to pay the fees or accept the fees in which the plan offers and so um, the premiums are pretty low because there isn't any real maintenance to the plans um, the client comes in say so they get a root canal the regular cost of the root canal is $1,500, the plan says, okay, we're going to discount that 40%. So you're only going to pay $900. Um, customer pays $900 to the dentist. The transaction's over. There's no company that you have to send paperwork to. It's just, you know, an agreed price set up. But there's no waiting periods. There's no deductibles. Um, there's no max out of you know limited amount of, that you can do a year if you want to spend ten thousand dollars on dental and get a 50 percent discount on that then you go ahead and spend that kind of money um and it, every procedure has a different percentage of it so the cleaning might pay 60 percent but a um let's say a implant might only pay 20 percent everything's going to have a difference but it's immediate. You can sign somebody up on one of these plans today, go see the dentist tomorrow, get the discount, save them, you know, a couple of hundred bucks on a crown. Um, that works pretty good. Um, vision and hearing can be tacked to that. Um, it's kind of works the same way. There's a percentage that they pay for those different services. Um, it's usually 15, 10 to 15% off is what they do. But the discount plans, if someone needs something immediately, um, no pre-existing conditions, you can just sign them up and they can go use it and save the money they can and be done with it. These can also be used after the MA plans if they've got some serious dental going on and they've used all their max um, amounts with their MA plans and they're embedded with those and they still need work they can still fall back on this and get more work done in the same year. They run about oh, $12, $15 a month in most cases for a premium, so not too bad. Um, questions number two, do all standalone dental plans pay a commission? Um, don't think I've talked about that yet, but you do have to be careful. Um, some dental plans will pay you a little bit for that and some of them won't so i'm not answering that question for you but uh i think you know what it is now um okay what type of dental coverage this is question number three that you'll need to get credit what type of dental coverage requires waiting periods for certain procedures no we just talked about that as well if you have problems with answering those questions, um, give me a call. Okay, we're getting into the last few minutes of the thing here. Um, 
talk a little bit about self-treatment. Um, if you want to try some of this stuff on your own, guys, I guess uh, your clients can do it. I ran across this um, video. Some of you have probably seen it in years past, but just makes me shake my head and go, you got to be kidding me. But uh, I guess, you know, you can do it yourself. So let's watch this and talk to you on the other side. Karen Hearn and her husband have performed various medical procedures at their home before, but now, for the first time, they're attempting a tooth extraction with the aid of some online videos. I don't like the idea of pulling my wife's teeth out. What if I pull the wrong one or something, you know? But um, my wife threatened to take her own tooth out, so this needs to be taken care of. Benzocaine is a numbing agent. I'm going to use benzocaine to numb up my gum so that when my husband pulls my tooth, I won't feel anything. The extraction will actually take place using this barber's tool. We found it at a yard sale used back in the early 1920s and 1930s for when people used to go to the barber rather than a dentist to have their teeth pulled. I'm building a, um, a vacuum for her mouth. I'm using a regular vacuum cleaner. And I'm going to stick out in part of the mouth and we can suck out the blood and whatever. And a straw with duct tape, which makes a good seal. Just, um, just regular cola. Phosphorus acid in the cola dissolves the rust in the metal. Scrape it off with aluminum foil. Rubbing alcohol will complete the sterilization of these instruments. I'm ready as I will ever be. Karen's dentist would have charged $185 for the tooth extraction. But because she already had most of the supplies on hand, the procedure will only cost $10. Nervous? A little. But I know I'm in good hands. How's that ice pack feel? It feels pretty good. Comfortable? Yes. How's your mouth? It's numb. Okay, um, <laughs> I hope, I hope the. Crazy, they're nuts. <laughs> Isn't that, I, I just, I'm got to collect my, every time I see that, it just kind of makes me just kind of want to throw up. Um, hopefully today's um, CE class will help us be motivated. And with that last video for 10 bucks, come on, you know. They're saving 185. If we can help our clients understand the need um, for dental coverage and how to get it from the plan that we have to offer, from the plans that are already on, maybe just a little bit of education, help them understand that it, it's out there for them um, and they won't have to take matters in their own hands and save $185 by pulling their own teeth. Um, so that's that was kind of the idea. The goal of this was to help educate agents of how to, um, you know, the importance of talking to their clients about dental care, what's available to them now for coverage. So that cost 
um, issue disappears and then uh, uh, hopefully their life and their health improves because they're getting better dental um, work there. So with that, thank you for participating in this uh, CE. I'll turn the time back over to Doug and, and those at Stonehill for um, taking care of the CE credit side of things. Uh, again, thank you for your participation and, and uh, let's do it again sometime. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Vince. Um, so you will be receiving an email um, from someone at Stonehill, David Oberly or Morgan Gustafson. Um, and if you could uh, please respond to that, and if you could include your license number and you could include your phone number, that would be great. I do, uh, I do uh, agree with some of those comments that were made as we were watching Spence's um video here i'm i'm sort of i think uh, jd said you know make it stop and i was kind of the same way it was kind of making my my muscles twinge a little bit as i watched that um we are going to take and post this if you have any questions about this on our site medicareplandetails.com uh you can get into that to watch this it just plays uh, as you go in with the browser um uh the password to get into it is ma2023 lowercase ma ma2023 and if any of you have questions like lisa you can please stay on here and ask the questions and we would uh, be happy to to get those answered for you so thank you very much we're a little bit over time so we're just going to let you all go thanks guys <laughs>